Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to um, my talk about um, how we at Braintech um, supported an alcohol producing company meeting the regulatory um, requirements in Switzerland. And um, I'd like to take you with me on the journey how we managed um, to get through that project. And um, I do this in several steps. First, but first I want to point to the big QR code on the right hand side. That's the QR code um, where you can add your questions, which will be um, hopefully answered at the end of this talk. So that's the agenda. First, I'd like to speak a little bit about Braintech, who we are. Then um, I'd li I will also introduce myself with a few words. And then I will present the company, Kinchi, is it called? and um, how we uh, tackled the project and what we delivered for them as a solution. And at the end of the talk, um, we can have a chat together. So who is Braintech? Braintech is a Swiss company delivering software solutions um, completely based on Odoo. We were founded in 2000, so Soon we will celebrate our 25th anniversary. Um, we are more than 80 employees uh, across 10 locations in Europe, um, over four different countries. And we are um, very much focused on projects in the DACH region, so Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Uh, we are Odoo Gold Counter in these um, three countries, so, um, and we could celebrate to be best partner Europe already three times, and we are nominated again this year. So we will see tomorrow if we can celebrate a fourth time. Um, so far, we did a project for over 300 companies um, of all different sizes, from small to mid caps to large players in their markets, and um, everything was done, as I said before, um, with Odoo. So, my name is Lucas. Um, I've worked with Braintech for four years now. Soon will, will be five years. Before, I worked in the retail industry, and um, from when I had uh, the feeling I could change and experience something new than just trade and retail, and um, so far it worked out. I can manage um, a lot of interesting projects throughout different industries, and um, for example, the one industry I will shortly present to you. So, who is Kinchi? Um, Kinchi is a traditional Swiss company um, founded in the year 1860 um, in the canton of Graubünden. Um, that's in the eastern part of Switzerland, um, located in the mountains, so also very much related um, to the whole winter sport activities. And um, Kinchi produces alcohol um, beverages, alcoholic beverages. Uh, the very famous one is the Bündner Röteli. It's a liquor made um, with cherries, and um, it's um, very famous in the Abtreschi, um bars um, along the slopes. Um, so that's um, why I knew Kinchi. So it was for me quite interesting to get to know them better um, and how they do their production. Kinchi was taken over by an international company called Marussia Beverages. Um, and within or as a, as a, as a um, yeah, logical next step of this takeover. Um, they also embarked on trading of um, products, different products. Um, so it's not just production anymore of um, their own liquors. Now they are also trading, meaning importing and exporting um, different uh, beverages. <coughs> and this led to yeah, the need for um, a better software solution. And that's when uh, that was when Kinchi met Braintech 
and that's when we um, started to introduce uh, or do for kimchi. What are the objectives or what were the objectives of that project? <clears throat> the objectives um, were first uh, digitize the processes. As I said before, Kinchi is a very traditional um, company. It means they also used to work in old ways with a lot of paper and with a lot of different systems, with a lot of Excel and Word. And um, they wanted to become uh, yeah, modern. Uh, they wanted to get rid of all the paper. They wanted to close gaps between um, systems. They wanted to uh, avoid breaks between systems. And um, that's why the uh, all-in-one solution called Odoo was uh, a perfect match for them. Um, they also wanted to gain efficiency. As I already said, close gaps, and they was, wanted to foster a seamless workflow, meaning the, the, the user, their employees, do not have to um, change into different systems while doing their work, so they become faster. And the third um, part is um, an important part. Uh, it's about fulfilling regulatory requirements. If you are an uh, alcohol-producing company, you have to declare um, um, every stock move, every production step of, um, of these beverages of, um, on, towards the authorities. And um, that's not an easy thing to do. They are very strict. And um, uh, we helped Kinchi with uh, customization um, within Odoo to fulfill these requirements. I will shortly tell a little bit more about it. So how, how, we, how, do we, how did we tackle um, the, the project? First of all, we had a, a pre-project phase together with them to gather all the requirements and then um, to to fill uh, a backlog and then to define a roadmap. That was uh, pretty straightforward. And then the first phase of the project was the, the phase, um, uh, I think a very important one, um, when we uh, <laughs> introduced the finance um, application, the accounting, and also the salary and timesheets. Um, for the salary, we introduced our BrainTech made uh, Swiss salary module, which covers um, all the relevant uh, requirements of the Swiss um, salary system. And our most important part um, in, this, in, this or in this phase of the project was that they start to work with Odoo very quickly, that they get used to Odoo, um, because then um, the the, let's say the barriers, the hurdles to get one step more, more and more um, was already done. And um, it's, it was quite easy to convince them that Odoo is a very good solution um, because already everyone was used to the system. The second phase was the most intense one about the processes. This, is, this was the moment when we started to, to um, digitize their value-creating processes, starting from sales via inventory, manufacturing, to purchase. Um, and there we had a lot of um, yeah, challenges to solve, uh, but in the end, it was possible. And right now, we are in the third phase. We are introducing um, the website made by Odoo and um, also the e-commerce. So POS and sales. Um, as you can see, they are really working with POS um, in their own shop. So they have an, uh, they have an own shop in uh, their uh, site where they also produce the, the, um, the, their products. And <clears throat> the, the POS um, and sales part of, of Kinchi has, um, as I said, three different types. So the first type is their direct sales in their shop. The second type is wholesaling. So the most part of their revenue um, is done by selling their products to, for example, big supermarkets or to bars. As I said in the beginning, they are very famous for, uh, for their drink, for their liquor on the, on the ski slopes. So as you might imagine, a lot of bars and restaurants um, buy the product 
of Kinchi. And um, the last part is also the e-commerce. They already have a running online shop, but they want to make it um, integrated. They want to integrate it with their system, and that's why we also want to provide that with Odoo. And the cool thing was, once we introduced the POS um, system of Odoo, the POS application, um, they were very um, yeah, excited about that because they said, wow, massive data is already here. It's just one click. And when I uh, perform a sale, it's already um, in my books, in the accounting. Um, this works seamlessly. So they were uh, really fascinated about that. Um, and they didn't think that it would work that easy. So here, uh, um, another proof for the advantage of the whole integrated system. The second part um, of the solution is the inventory and the manufacturing. And for the inventory, we had a challenge that they run several warehouses. So they have an, an internally managed warehouse in their production site. This was quite easy to um, configure. The more complex part was their external warehouse um, run by a third party. And there we had to um, to develop interfaces. And we are using EDI messages to exchange <coughs> the different uh, flow of the, of, the, of the products. And um, also there, they were quite happy about the new solution because before, in their old system, uh, all deliveries were not confirmed back into, into their ERP system. And they al always had to run an inventory adjustment overnight. Uh, which was quite a, a mess and also a pain. And um, with this new interfacing with Odoo, it was very easy for them to um, make these processes automated. And they have also a third warehouse. That's the shop. The shop, their retail shop is, uh, itself, needs to be a separate warehouse because um, due to legal and regulatory requirements, when they sell products, um, they need to like exclude them from their uh, original warehouse um, because uh, otherwise they could not declare the correct flow of the, these alcoholic products. So that was the setup um, concerning inventory. And for manufacturing, um, they had, um, I have to say, that's a very good advantage if you have someone in the project on the, on the customer side who is um, thinking very much straightforward. And uh, um, it's, a, it's a she, it's a Ilona, she calls. She's the head of production. And she said, I will use the standard. That's fine for me. And she's really using standard and had nothing to customize there. So uh, manufacturing <coughs> is used fully standard um, with build of materials, manufacturing orders, orders operation types. So uh, there we are were quite fast to solve, the, solve that um, issues. So once we have sold everything and produced everything, um, it creates a demand, obviously. And this demand uh, is handled in the back office. So the back office, as you see here, uh, is also working with Odoo. <coughs> and they are managing all the um, purchase orders. And they also. Uh, care about the reporting um, from, for, for the accounting and towards the Marussia group, the, the mother, the holding. So this is there, everything is done with Odoo um, in their back office. Yeah. And now the part about this regulatory requirements. Um, there we uh, introduced a solution that they can flexibly configure um, the different report lines. These report lines are mainly based on stock moves and uh, operation types. Um, so they can define if a product, product um, comes from uh, outside into our company, into, into the company. So if it is like a, a receipt, an incoming delivery, then uh, it will be um, considered in the respective line in the reporting. They also have the production, so when they turn something into a final product, they also need to declare that. And uh, finally, if they sell something, um, when the product leaves their warehouse, it's also respected in the report. And um, 
you see there, um, you, you can see maybe a little bit that um, it's very flexible to create such a report line. And um, in the end, we get an Excel export, um, which is based um, on the same structures as they have to enter it um, in the form of the authorities. So there was very important that the export has the same structure um, so they can easily enter the information um, into the authorities form, which is unfortunately not yet um, connected online, but maybe in the future. So they are um, now live with uh, this solution, I think, since um, more January already. So it's been a while and I'm quite happy. I haven't heard anything about it. So um, that's why we are now fully focusing <laughs> on uh, the e-commerce solution. And there they will um, support uh, an online shop for their B2B customers and as well for their B2C customers. And the B2B customers, they of course, depending on their size and the uh, quantities they um, purchase, have special prices. And these special prices are um, considered in a price list. And the customers also, when they log in, they just see their prices and they can also place their orders online if they want to. So that's running right now. Um, Go live will be soon, so maybe you get an update um, in the next experience days how, how this part of the project worked. Exactly. So um, I'm almost close to the end of my talk. Um, you are now uh, invited to ask questions, if there are questions. Um, and you are also um, invited to join join us um, to learn more about this project and our other projects um, in the big hall next to uh, that building and booth uh, B8. Uh, we are happy to answer your questions there. Unfortunately, we cannot serve you uh, a shot of Bündner Röteli because it didn't pass the customs. Um, but we have a coffee machine there so you can drink a coffee with us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Lucas, uh, for this nice talk. I just have one question here. It's, what's the biggest custom development for? For yes, this project. for this project. Yeah, for this project, the, bis the biggest custom development was actually really this, um, this, this report and to make it um, that flexible. So whenever the authorities change something in their regulation, in their requirements, that they can adapt easily to that. So that, that was... That was one thing which was quite challenging um, because they didn't really know about what they really need to declare first. So that <laughs> was a little bit of moving targets. But then finally, we realized that a good solution. And the second biggest um, customization was the, the connection to the warehouse, to the external warehouse, to get this, uh, all the exceptions also done. And yeah. OK, thank you. thank you. Another question is, which version are you working on? Are they working on? Yeah, I forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. So we started the project with ver version 13. And okay. um, during the project, we migrated to version 14 um, because we had the outlook to also deliver um, the, the website. And there were a lot of changes. And that's why we did an upgrade in between. And now they are live on version 14. But I think they have to migrate very soon okay. again. <laughs> Perfect. Um, does spread spreadsheet will improve the reporting, do you think? The, uh, the Odoo spreadsheet yes. um, module, yeah. I think it, it will, yes. Um, actually, they are not using it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, pro probably in a future solution, they might use it, yes. OK, thanks. Uh, then how was the Go Live party? The Go Live? The Go Live party. The Go Live party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of Bündner Röteli, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think that's, uh, that's it for, okay. uh, for, it, for today. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.